After months of delays, the extradition hearing for Julian Assange is finally taking place at the Central Criminal Court in London, and this is really important. This is a big moment for journalism in the United States, because if they actually agree to extradite Julian Assange to the U.S. for prosecution, this is going to set a really, really dangerous precedent. So this is something that everyone should be paying attention to. It just started on Wednesday, so, you know, we don't have all of the details about the case yet. We do know, according to, to the New York Times, that, you know, uh, this was delayed a lot due to COVID-19. And also, you know, it was a digital hearing in a way. I don't know if all of it was digital, but parts of it were digital and it was riddled with errors and whatnot. But in spite of that, there are still people showing up. Uh, there are protesters outside calling on them to not extradite Julian Assange to the U.S. And what's really startling about this case is last year, Julian Assange was in such poor health that doctors actually warned that he could die in jail. Now, I don't know if his health conditions have improved, um, but this is... There's a lot going on. That's all I'll say. And a lot of people just instinctively, they have this like knee-jerk reaction whenever they hear Julian Assange because they think, oh, Russia 2016. What we're talking about here is the United States government trying to prosecute him under the Espionage Act for the Chelsea Manning leaks. Now, the Chelsea Manning leaks exposed war crimes. Julian Assange and WikiLeaks published what Chelsea Manning exposed. And that's why they want to prosecute him. That's why... They're trying to get him extradited to the United States because they don't want journalists exposing the crimes of our government. So if they do this, then this sends a message to other publications. Don't publish our war crimes, otherwise we're going to come after you. Now, thankfully, someone who has a lot of credibility and legitimacy when it comes to whistleblowing, Daniel Ellsberg, is speaking out on behalf of Julian Assange and he penned a letter defending Julian Assange. So as Brett Wilkins of Common Dreams reports, Daniel Ellsberg, who famously leaked the Pentagon Papers exposing U.S. lies and crimes in Southeast Asia, told a British court on Tuesday that the U.S. government is seeking both revenge against WikiLeaks founder Julian Assange and to crush future whistleblowers with its extradition attempt. Ellsberg's eight-page written statement to the London court considering a U.S. request to extradite Assange was an incisive statement of support for the 49-year-old Australian who has been jailed in the UK since 2019 for avoiding a 2010 international arrest warrant from Sweden for alleged sex offenses. Assange's imprisonment followed a nearly seven-year period of political asylum granted by Ecuador, which agreed he could face political persecution if extradited to Sweden or the US, spent entirely in the South American nation's London embassy. Last year, Nils Melzer, the United Nations Special Rapporteur on Torture, repeatedly called the cumulative effects of the US Britain and Sweden ganging up on Assange, a form of psychological torture. The Trump administration last year formally requested Britain's extradition of Assange under the 1917 Espionage Act and the Computer Fraud and Abuse Act. U.S. authorities accused him of conspiring to hack government computers and illegally disclosing classified and sensitive national defense information. Critics from both sides of the mainstream political aisle have called Assange's actions reckless. At the height of WikiLeaks revelations, some leading Republicans and Donald Trump called for his extradition. Execution. However, Ellsberg refuted claims that Assange acted in such a manner, asserting in the court statement that his approach was the exact opposite of reckless and that Assange would not willfully expose others to harm. Ellsberg also noted that very frequently the claim for national security has been erected to obscure illegality and deceit, often on a major scale, and argued that the closest similarities between his and Assange's cases include the manner in which the exposure of illegality and criminal acts institutionally and by individuals was intended to be crushed by the administration carrying out those illegalities. This, Ellsberg argued, is in part in revenge for revealing wrongdoing, as well as an attempt to crush all such future exposure of the truth. I have closely observed the actions of the U.S. government, its military, and its intelligence agency, the CIA, and that the the actions in question were never intended to be revealed, including rendition and torture, the use of black sites, and crimes against humanity, wrote Ellsberg. Among the most important documents shared by WikiLeaks were the Afghanistan and Iraq war logs, which revealed war crimes, including mass killing of civilians, extrajudicial killing, torture, corruption, and other crimes and abuses committed by the U.S. and coalition forces and the governments of Afghanistan and Iraq. 
So this is a really important statement that Daniel Ellsberg released, and I'm really thankful that he did just that, because someone like him has credibility. Someone like him is needed. His voice is crucial here, because what he did wasn't easy. What he did was very difficult and risky. But now we can look back, having hindsight, and see that Daniel Ellsberg was correct to release the Pentagon Papers. So, you know, for him to say this about Julian Assange and how maybe we need more foresight with regard to this case, maybe we're going to make the same mistake and demonize him when in actuality what he did was noble in publishing those uh, those leaks, um, you know, it's important, it's needed. And politicians on both sides of the aisle, as the article uh, pointed out, or Ellsberg's letter pointed out, they kind of seem to be in agreement. Like, I went to a town hall with uh, Jeff Merkley, one of the most progressive senators in uh, the United States. And I asked him about this. I asked him what he could do to stop Donald Trump from prosecuting Julian Assange under the Espionage Act because I was worried about the impact that this would have on journalism and the First Amendment in this country. And when I made that statement, like when I asked him this question, um, people were like audibly sighing when they heard me say Julian Assange because liberals are so like programmed to hate Julian Assange because they link him to WikiLeaks and link WikiLeaks to Russia more specifically, that like it was it was heresy to bring up how this is important. And there's a broader issue that could set a really dangerous precedent going forward. And Jeff Merkley's response was dog shit, basically. He just said, well, you know, I'll look into that. I basically got an answer, right? So even the progressives, um, they're not necessarily speaking up about this issue. And that's really, really frustrating because if nobody in power is speaking up, then people who aren't aware of this case taking place because they have a lot of other things going on. I mean, hurricanes, wildfires, uh, COVID-19, like they're not going to pay attention. So you have to draw attention to this. So it's really important that lawmakers speak up because this could set a dangerous precedent. Like if he's extradited to the United States and he's prosecuted under the Espionage Act, I mean, imagine what the government will get away with. This sends a message to everyone else. And whenever some other whistleblower wants to come forward exposing the government's war crimes, a publication is not going to want to publish this because they saw what the U.S. government did to Julian Assange if they, in fact, follow through with this, if he gets extradited, and they're just going to think it's too risky. So then we won't know what abuses of power our government is committing, either at home or abroad. So I really, really hope that he's not extradited. Um, I hope that his health improves. Um, but we'll just have to really follow this case closely. It's super important. So if you weren't aware of this taking place this week, and, you know, I don't necessarily blame you since it's been delayed a lot, definitely pay attention to this because there is a lot at stake here.